Hi there, um, welcome to C Programming Tutorials. In today's tutorial, we are going to learn about the relationship between arrays and pointers. Um, in the past few tutorials, we have we first uh, learned about arrays and then we learned about pointers, and now we will see how we can use pointers to access the elements of an array. Okay, so before we start, as usual, I would like to let you know that um, uh, if you uh, that uh, it would be really nice if you could uh, subscribe to the, this channel if you haven't subscribed yet, or you become the fan of the Facebook page Awesome C Programming Tutorials in High Def. Um, if you haven't become the fan uh, yet. Um, and I would also really appreciate if you could give me some feedback on uh, on on these videos. Um, uh, if you if you like the videos, please uh, uh, click on the thumbs up button and uh, etc. Um, it just uh, lets me know, you know, encourages me to to keep on making those videos. Um, anyway, so let's get started. So <coughs> we learned that we could basically, for example, if we were to define an array of integer integers, we could basically do something like like this. This basically defines an array of integers named x and it has 100 elements. Now there are you know it, it has 100 elements but the size it, it, it obviously it occupies some space in the memory. The size of the memory that that it occupies or the amount of memory that it occupies in um, in RAM is basically depending upon the size of integer. So there are hundred elements. Each element is an integer. Usually, <coughs> excuse me. Usually, an integer is four bytes long. One integer, one int variable. If I de declare something like int a, this takes up four bytes in memory. So this must be taking a four hundred bytes in memory okay each element taking four bytes now let's declare a pointer to you know uh, some pointer variable so how do do you declare a pointer to int this is how you declare it right int and then you uh, use the asterisk and then you basically write the pointer name you could name it anything you want I usually tend to name pointers starting with a small p and then you can name after that whatever you want. So let's let's call it px, because in in the ne uh, subsequently we will see how we will be able to use px to manipulate the elements of of an array. So how do we do do that? Um, let's see. Next, what we could do is we could basically assign. So let let me bring up my pen here. Um, let's try to see what happened here. What we did is we declared an integer array. Oops, sorry. Uh, an integer array, which is which has one hundred integers. Okay, one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay, the subscripts of these variables, uh, these elements, is zero, one, two. 3 and so on to 99 right now the name of the array is x it obviously it's part of uh, of uh, of memory computer memory in the previous uh, uh, tutorials we I drew the diagram vertically this time I'm drawing the diagram horizontally each element here from here to here is basically four bytes long okay now this is the start of the start of array x and it has some address okay it it, it has some address so <coughs> what what this is what this guy did this statement here this is what it did it it resulted in the allocation of uh, of memory enough to store 100 integers okay which is basically going to be 400 bytes total okay starting at some location we don't know it really depends wh whatever address it is now this what what this did is basically 
it allocated memory enough memory one sm little piece of memory in space uh, in, in memory basically that would allow us to make it point anywhere somewhere else in the memory so actually I've even though I've drawn it you know this is visualization of what's going on here okay so this is PX and it is all it also exists in this memory here okay it doesn't it it's not like outside the memory it's somewhere in the memory okay somewhere else in the memory this PX has been allocated okay and all what it does is basically it size of PX the size of PX is what it is, what is going to store it's going to store an address okay now address of every location has the same size so it really doesn't matter what type of vari pointer variable it is the size of the pointer variable is the same in any given computer okay usually it is also four bytes okay usually it is also four bytes or it could be eight bytes also All right now now this pointer whatever it is it doesn't matter what is the size of pointer the way we visualize it is basically we draw a square and we have um, let me see why it's not working oh I see so we draw a square and that basically and uh, and make up an arrow coming out of it okay and the value of this pointer which is an address will basically determine which location it is pointing to so let's keep this in mind and what we are going to do is we are going to make px equal to the address of this of of this location here of this array okay and how do we do that do that it's simple uh, okay let's see the way we are going to do it is basically we are going to say is equal to the address of x now how do we do this how do we get the address of x well normally when you define x like this as a integer we saw in our previous lecture the address of x this is how we do address of x okay if it is a single integer but here it's an array itself remember the name of the array actually represents the s of the starting location of that array so in our case in the in the diagram that I just drew it, it would be the address of the element 0 or the start of the array so the name itself is an address so you don't do this ampersand x actually you don't need to do it you should not do it do this px is your x basically gives uh, that basically stores the address of the start of the array or address of the array into px and after this what I could do is I could access each and every element of px because at this point uh, if I draw it again at this point what has happened is this is our x right px is pointing to the element 0 and I think I'm running out of here so let's continue this tutorial in the next video uh, I would really appreciate if you could um, if you could subscribe and um, and actually if you like this tutorial you could basically do a thumbs up on that thank you so much